then last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about the big boxing match coming up July 29th. Earl the Truth Spence Jr., the big fish versus Terrence Bud Crawford. One of the biggest matchups we've had in a long, long time, probably since Mayweather and Pacquiao. Now, they had a press conference in, I believe, New York and L.A. I can't remember when, but it was, it was one or two weeks ago. And look, they're friendly outside of the ring. When they're not fighting, they're pretty friendly. They, they don't really seem like they have any animosity towards each other. But going into that press conference and what we saw there, man, they, they were trading some, some words. Not na- anything nasty, but it's very direct and blunt. You have two alpha dogs in the same room together, and they're just, you were bound to have fireworks. So one of the key highlights at the press conference was when they were talking about resumes, Spence was like, who have you fought? Who have you fought? You're talking about, you you done this and that. You fought Kel Brook. He said, yo, Kel Brook, I beat him. He was a broken fighter when he fought you. He he said, Sean Porter, oh, you beat him? Uh, what last year a year and a half ago oh he ain't trained that hard his dad said he ain't trained that hard he already had a foot out the door so that don't count no i, I can see the cow book argument but like sean porter look he was ready sean porter was sean porter he always sean porter and that was a great win but that that was something that was brought up at the, at the press conference you know take that what you will but you know let me know what you guys think about that i, I think that Terrence Crawford doesn't have a great resume, but he has a very solid resume. Kevin Brook, shot fighter, still got the job done. That's an okay one, okay? Um, Sean Porter, great win. Sean Porter is always Sean Porter. You had the win against Victor Postal at 140, I believe. Victor Postal had just beaten somebody who was very good to get the titles, and then Crawford came and dominated Postal the entire fight. He had the uh, win over Lundy, um, he had a couple very, very notable wins. He had another win over a very, very, I think he was a Russian fighter. Very, very good fighter. Very tough, physical, uh, throwback fighter. So he's he's battle-tested. He definitely, look, push comes to shove, Bud gets hit, he, he punches back and tries to get you up out of there. Same thing with Spence. They're two dogs, man. So that was one thing that stood out to me about the press conference. Second thing that stood out to me about the press conference was... The, the war of words and the war of wills. Let's call it that, the war of wills. Okay, you have two guys that just, I see it my way and that's the way it's gonna go. If I say I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. And look, you can say what you want to, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna win. I ain't even worry about a rematch clause. Whenever they asked them about the rematch clause, both of them were like, well, I don't know. The other guy's gonna enact it because I ain't losing. That's pretty much their sentiment. And Earl Spence, Big dude, you know what he brings. He'll, he'll walk you down. He has solid defense. He'll, he takes more punches than he probably should, but he's the type of guy to download the data, walk you down, and over the course of seven, eight, nine rounds, you know, the body work that he's put in, he'll start breaking it down and then just stop you. That's that's his style. He don't necessarily have one-punch knockout power, but he has that um, thudding, wear you down over the course of the fight type of power kind of reminiscent of a marvelous Marvin Hagler. Marvin Hagler wasn't necessarily knocking people out cold, but he just, he was a bully. Like the juggernaut, just Terminator, back from the future, walk you down, menacing. No emotion on his face. He just, you hit him and he's like, cool. And he's just going to keep walking forward, right? And what Earl Spence was saying was like, yo, look, he's a great fighter, but you know what I mean? I, I hope I don't break, I, don't, I hope I don't break his face too badly in the, in the fight and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like he he's coming with that type of energy. It's like look, he's like with with my my skill set. I feel like my skill set and my ability is gone. It's it's really going to show in this fight, and it's not going to be too much about talent. It's it's way more difficult. A lot of stuff occurred during that time, so you know I could see why I probably not be the, the favorite. But it's going to be, definitely be a difficult fight, and you, that's why you know I have to be more focused, and I come to the point. I, I, I've I've got to be on point throughout the whole fight. But he's talking about pretty much walking him down. He's like, yo, I got to break him. I'm going to break him mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'll be breaking his will. Hopefully, I don't break his face too bad. Like, yeah, that's some strong-ass words. That's a strong-ass 
statement that he's making there. And Bud was just like, look, he said he's going to try to break me. I'm going to try to break him. One of our worlds going to break and ain't going to be me. That's that's pretty much the back and forth between them. And it's they weren't yelling. They weren't screaming. You know, they, they, they had to take a little jabs here, here and there with, with some jokey jokes and whatnot. You know, oh, you the big fish. I'm going to reel you in. And then Spence is like, oh, well, they call you Bud. Well, I'm going to smoke you like a... Like like a dime bag, you know, like like little little jabs like that, you know. It it was it was cute. It, it was it was wholesome and whatnot. But it, you could you could sense the intensity under the surface. It's like when you're walking on a lake, a sheet a thick sheet of ice, right on a lake. It, it looks nice and calm, but under the surface of that is a current that's running underneath that ice. And if you fall in, you see exactly how violent that water is underneath the surface of that ice. And that's the sentiment I get from these two guys, especially from that press conference. They're, they're calm and cool on the surface. Just throw a few, few jabs there, here and there, but they ain't really getting into, into nothing venomous, right? Like Triple G or Canelo. But make no mistake about it, they're there to break each other's will. And they're very clear about that point. So that's why I'm really excited about. I was already excited about the fight, but you know, they just reaffirmed my convictions on that. Let me know what you guys think about that. You know, I'll I'll talk about it more as we get closer to the fight and the 24 sevens come out or whatever they're called for the network they're on. It's going to probably be through PBC, and and as we see what they look like as, as they wind down their training camps, what they look like on the mitts, how, how's the um the the open training session look like for the media. How are they? How they look during the face-off, as as the fight's about to happen. How they look at like at the weigh-in. All these little particulars that are going to influence my opinion on who's going to win. I'll talk about that as we get closer to to the fight, which is coming up quicker than we realize. We're almost already at July fourth, and last time I, I made a video was you know about a month ago. So time flies, right? But we we're getting we we're approaching this fight quickly. And then last but not least, another bit of news on the boxing front. Canelo signed a big deal with PBC, Premier Boxing Champions. And let me go ahead and look up this article here uh, via ESPN. Canelo Alvarez and Jamel Charlo, who has the edge and what will the PBC deal mean and what could be next? Okay, so Canelo Alvarez, he signed a three-fight deal with PBC. That's big news, okay? And his first fight... Is targeted for him to face off with Jermel Charlo. Uh, it's targeted to be held in September and broadcast on Showtime pay per view. All right. So, first off, you know, I, I love that move. Okay. Jamal Charlo, J- Jamal, excuse me, I always get them confused. Well, young line out of Texas. You, you know what he is. You know his temperament. You know exactly what he's, what he's finna do when he gets in that ring. He's a knockout artist. And Canelo. They're, he's finally matching up against Charlo. Look, I, I love I love the, the matchup, and I'll give my thoughts on who's going to win. I won't tell you guys right now, but that's that's going to be a very very good fight. Okay, Canelo Alvarez has been very very active over the past couple of years. You know, Dimitri Bivol, even though he lost, he's stepping up to ch- take on that type of challenge. Um, he's, he's been he's been all around the world. You know, he, he got he became undisputed at 168, first Mexican to do that in history. So he's been very, very active. So this Charlo fight, coming back down to 168, I believe, is a very big fight for him. So we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. Let me know what you guys think about that. And if you're looking forward to that fight, um, do you think that Alvarez is making a good move by signing the, the deal with PBC and I would assume Al Heyman? Or is he what what should he have done in your opinion? Um, so that that's it for now. Oh, another one, another one. There's always more news. Oh, it's more news. All right. So last but not least, Manny Pacquiao may be coming back to fight. And this was reported back in March 14th, 2023. And this ties into Conor Ben, young, explosive process, uh, prospect. Conor Ben, uh, only 25 years old, undefeated. He had the the uh, drug, drug doping scandal uh, recently that I think they just got cleared up. But between him fighting... Uh, Chris Eubank, which which is probably on. Um, if he beats Chris Eubank, will he fight Manny Pacquiao next? That's that's huge to me. Okay, Conor Ben, he hasn't really fought anybody on his resume yet. Okay, but if he beats 
uh, Eubank Jr. That'd be a nice win for him. And it's also, there's a little family rivalry there as well. But if he gets past him and he gets a shot at Manny Pacquiao, now nah, that's going to really catapult him into the public eye. Because people know about him, but they don't know about him. But if you fight Manny and win, oh, they, you're going to be in the spotlight for real. Okay? So let me know what you guys think about all the boxing news. What do you guys think about the Flyers move in the draft to get um, Matvey Mishkov? And then give me your thoughts on James Harden and where you think he's going to be headed and the big move to pick up his option for 2023 for the $35 million option. Uh, that being said, that's it for this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Always enjoys talking to you guys, and I'll be back with more news as it happens. Till next time, peace.